Ah, que vazio. Welcome back to Burn Down, the weekly show dedicated to the release of SC Alpha. But is this the wrong stage? Was that a couple? Was that behind? That was a deep. That was a deep cut. I didn't know who would pick up on that out there. Ah, I was just going to pick up. Whoa! Para, para tudo, para tudo. I didn't think he was going to make it. Did you guys? He's, he's, he's so I'm um... so you guys are all inclusive. No, I'm kidding. All right, guys. So we obviously have a cool of, uh, panels here, and by the thinning of the crowd, I assume they're over there in the second stage or enjoying the uh, new release of uh, of Secret Booth. If you guys haven't gotten over there, I can see you wearing T-shirts that say our release. How did you get those? Who handed those out at the top of the show? Jared, was that? Wow. One one pain jazzle. So let's get right to it. Valkyrie Liberator WB is Warbounds, né? About the new Star Citizen flight model. Who's excited for that? Fala, tô indo. Sei, cara, como é que tá, beleza? Não, anime, a última apresentação. É, tá, a última apresentação começa às 22, tá certo? Ah, às 23 é a. É o evento de fechamento. Tá, beleza, então. Então a cara dali não dá pra me pegar. Eu vou pegar, então. A Valkyrie Standalone Ship. Next up, David Coulson. Come on out. Ah, que lindo, que linda nave, velho. Tô apaixonado pela, pela Valkyrie. All right, gentlemen. Have a good time. See you guys soon. Hello. Hello. So, I heard you all care about flight. Um, Agora nesse próximo evento, David Coulson e, se não me engano, John Crewe, eles vão falar sobre os princípios de voo e também a nova experiência de voo que eles estão construindo para o Star Citizen. Deixa eu aumentar o volume aqui, que agora eles resolveram falar baixo. This is what matters to everyone is, you know, what's next for flight and Star Citizen. And I think uh, since, say, 2.6, we haven't really uh, had what we wanted out of this. Seja bem-vindo, Trianos. Valeu pelo follow, cara. This vision for how we want it. Um, and so we've sort of gone back to 2.6 and we've looked at what, you know, we had in, in 3.0 and we're like reevaluating everything and, and Eu tô thinking about tudo what is the best way to bring the experience that is the most interesting for everyone. And so if we look at what that kind of means, um, we want you to really feel the ship. Um, you know, currently flying around, it's sort of the ships kind of feel quite similar between a lot of them and they have so much acceleration. Eles estão comentando que antigamente as naves elas pareciam ser muito parecidas umas com as outras. Tem o mesmo comportamento de voo. Really want, um, we want this system to be kind of reactive to what's going on inside your ship. So it's not so, not as simple as just, uh, you know, flying and then you feel your your ship's handling and then you do your combat and whatever we we, we want you to feel what's happening inside the ship system Com Raj perguntando que não entendi o que a gente tem para agora 3.3 já tá no ar Não, a 3.3 provavelmente vai ser liberado no final do evento, tá? Agora eles vão falar sobre a nova experiência de voo que eles vão trazer para a 3.3, entendeu? Um, so, you know, eles estão falando que agora so eles vão ship, que a, 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 o sistema vai ser muito mais reativo, vai ser muito mais profundo, vai ter uma variedade muito maior de comandos, de controle para ter na nave. Um, sort of um, kind of make, going back to the reactive thing, I think that's really important because we really want, uh, we want the thrusters to, um, to have like a thrust strength, and then that, if we can change that, we can kind of work toward uh, changing the handling of the ship while you're flying, which is something that we've never really had before. So, what we're about to show you, not final. Um, Fala, so you Pablo, know, beleza, sure cara? Como é que tá tudo tranquilo? Play this flight model in the uh, the Drake Virtual Training Facility oh, downstairs. Ah, aviso importante, ó. Um, essa não é a versão feedback, final do flight model. Um, and we wanna Vamos ver se melhorou. To the, to the correct flight model that is, you know, best for everyone. So this is not final, um, and I hope you, I hope you enjoy it, anyways. Um, but you know, we'll work with us, and we'll, we'll get it to what we want it to be. Vamos dar uma olhada para ver como é que ficou. Bah, isso tá legal pra caramba. 
se eles balancearem direitinho, vai ficar massa. Ah, ele meio, meio que driftando dentro da, da atmosfera, porque eu vou na atmosfera e no... Yeah, e... So, video is obviously very hard to get across the, the feeling of flight, so... Ó, oh, deixa eu tentar ele falar ali. About a lot of stuff here. Um, so, let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Yeah, we'll start with controls, I think right at the bottom of the flight system. Um, para para o follow, Noratus. Um, Seja bem-vindo, cara. Direct control over your ship now, and that works at a, a much wider range of speeds. Um, it's, it's sort of the feedback we've had from people today. <laos> Me adota. Sabe de onde é que saiu essa grana, Atmos? Foi do dia que eu comprei a Carrack. Aí eu derreti uh, ela. Comecei a pegar outras naves. Olha uh, só. Oh, you now have a speed bar, and you're moving your speed up and down by pressing W and S, say for mouse and keyboard. Ah, ele só mudou, ó. Ah, mas, como você pode ver, se você apertar W e depois você imediatamente deixa o barco parar, o barco para isso é diferente do que nós tínhamos anteriormente, onde você tinha essa espécie de range definida e você apertou W e S para mover a velocidade de barco up down that range. Mas nós não temos essa range mais, certo? Então, a velocidade apenas se move up e se você está acelerando os thrusters ou não. E parece um pouco sutil, mas eu te prometo que isso é uma mudança muito significativa e isso muda a forma de você um, and it changes how you're gonna have to fly. Agora a gente não tem mais o, o controle de, de, de thruster. Peraí, deixa eu ver aqui. On the speed bar there is the target velocity that the coupled mode flight is trying to get you toward, right? So if you turn, your speed is gonna change. You know, your forward speed is gonna change uh, uh, from that dot and what that dot is supposed to be. Já explico para você o que Coupled mode essentially amounts to moving your speed toward that dot. It wants your forward velocity to be o que ele está falando agora é que as naves elas não vão ter mais aquela, aquele controle de porcentagem dos thrusters, que ia de 0 a 100%. Agora só tem um indicador de velocidade que a nave pode chegar. Ou ela pode ir, ir para velocidade máxima ou velocidade mínima. Né? Uh, quando, quando a nave está em couple mods, aquele ponto amarelo é a velocidade máxima que ela consegue chegar até ali. This allows you to finally control your thrust uh, power, lets you manage your accelerations. Uh, so this sets how strong your thrust is in all axes uh, when ISS is trying to move your ship, and it gives you that, that fine control. So if you don't want to go at full tilt, you can just bring it down, and then you're going to move at a much, much slower rate. You want to get it faster, just scroll it back up again. Aqui dali, se não me engano, acho que os controles de thruster ainda. Yeah, so the way this works in HOTAS is your, uh, if you're using a not bidirectional throttle, which you can do, um, thrusting forward will increase the amount of acceleration that your thrusters are giving. So you can hear that as you push your thrust forward, you're going to get more acceleration out of your ship, and that speed is moving further up the bar, right? And then if you want a retro thrust, you have the retro thrust on a button. And this kind of acts uh, a bit like space brake. Ah, so vai ter retro booster uh, também, ó. Retro thrusters fire and pull that speed back again. Here's another shot of this. You can hear the uh, Cara, tá, the tá bem interessante esse sistema aí. That, that up. The other option here is to have uh, a bidirectional thrust. So you can actually have zero thrust effectively be the center setting on the throttle if you have a throttle that has like a an indent in the middle. E depois você pode pular para ir para trás, ou fazer retro thrust, e you know, push forward to, to fire forward thrust. Isso é um pouco significante, porque, you know, previously, if you were, if you pulled back, Fala, Henrique, your, your throttle, it would move that o que está acontecendo? Fala, Henrique, beleza? O que vai fazer o seu target speed subir, o que vai fazer você se acelerar, mas isso não é o que está acontecendo agora. Se você pular para o seu HOTAS, você está matando efetivamente o thrust nos main thrusters, e você vai continuar a muito mais realista agora o sistema de, de propulsão. So, I think, let's talk let's about... Let's talk about Afterburner. Yeah, go on. Uh, specifically, AB2, the, uh, that's that second stage of Afterburner. So, are we done with it? Well, it's gone. It's gone. You guys are going to talk about uh, Afterburner, so the second stage of the game. We'll make a few people happy. Um, <laughs> no longer do you just hold shift to get up to, to cruise speeds. There's that weird 
bit in the middle where you're like, is it going? Is it not going? Oh, now it's going. Oh, I don't want to go there. Yeah. So no more scaling your accelerations back. No more kicking you out when you move. So that's Afterburner. What about Boost? Well, Boost is now correctly called Afterburner. <laughs> um, so yeah, now you press Shift and you will essentially you're firing boost, right? So you're going to get more acceleration out of the ship. Um, and this is not related to uh, going to cruise speeds. This is literally the same as boost was, right? You're going to do this, and you're going to you're going to feel a, a oh, more after acceleration. Burn, finalmente vai ser que nem era antes. There has been a previous issue with boost. Segura uh, o shift e vai ter o boost na nave. Um, with some people taping it down, yeah, I've heard we, this is a thing that happens. We know about you guys taping boost down just for. For yeah, benefits. so we want we wanted a consequence to using boost. Um, so we're actually going to get back to that in a little bit because we need to go over something else first. So ah, eles queriam uma consequência para o uso do boost. Now, now então provavelmente o cara vai ter um, um consumo bem maior de combustível pelo jeito. Speed in any direction, coupled or decoupled. So let's have a look at it in action. Ah, para o cara chegar a velocidade de cruzeiro, é só acelerar até chegar lá. Estou apenas segurando W, acelerando para o passo. Você vê, eu vou passar a velocidade de SCM, e o barco continua a acelerar. Agora, em coplado, isso está acontecendo com apenas o barco acelerando para frente, mas você pode fazer isso com qualquer dos strafe axes também, e você pode fazer isso em decoplado. Você apenas acelera por as longe que você precisa, e você vai até a velocidade do barco, que é praticamente a mesma do que as velocidades de cruzeiro que nós tínhamos mas para chegar à velocidade de cruzeiro, só acelerar. Então, há uma mudança que é bastante importante aqui. Quando você vai passar a velocidade de maneira segura do barco, o coplado vai começar a limitar a sua velocidade velocidade. E isso é algo que nós tivemos há um tempo atrás em cruzeiro. E isso é uma feature do coplado, porque, se você está acima das velocidades, e os seus thrusters não são suficientes para se mover por você, você vai apenas drifar por milhas e milhas e milhas. Então, isso é algo que você pode pensar em uma feature de coplado que é dizendo que, você sabe, você está acima das velocidades de cruzeiro, 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 você está acima There, uh, I'm in decoupled. I'm going all over the place. If you were to go back into coupled at this point, you're going to have a huge amount of slide. Obviously, you're, you've got that huge. Cristiano perguntando uh, se não tem nenhum traje yeah. anti força G. Eu acho que vai ter sim, yeah, cara, the, que vai auxiliar no aguentar mais força G, mas zerar totalmente. Acho que não tem. I think it's really cool as well that you know previously getting into cruise speeds and in, in to be going in a perfectly straight line, um, but because we've removed that restriction. Sim, agora a ponta acelera ele chegar na velocidade de cruzeiro. Nada mais justo. Gostei pra caramba. Se você está apenas flying around, o que se você não quer ir para essas velocidades? O que se você não quer estar em essas velocidades em que você está tendo a velocidade de angular e é uma pena para manejar isso, especialmente se você é um piloto mais experiente. Então o que nós temos é um limitador de velocidade. E isso é um toggle, certo? Então você pode pressar o botão e colocar o seu ship em uma velocidade de velocidade. Então você pode pressar o botão e colocar o seu ship em uma velocidade de velocidade. Então você pode pressar o botão e colocar o seu ship em uma velocidade de velocidade. Keep you from sliding too much, um, and you could think of this almost almost like a safety. We call it SCM safety. Um, so we'll just have a look at how that works. Porque so se ficar acelerando speed, infinitamente, ele vai safety button, and that will bring oh, up these two triangles on your speed bar, and this is going to hold you inside a certain speed range, where we can pretty much make sure that you're not going to drift too much, and we'll reevaluate those speeds for all the ships to kind of keep. Keep you from sliding too much. Ah, que dali é uma área segura para a nave não deslizar demais. Não sei se ela vai ser configurável, mas parece que toda a nave vai ter. Tu vai poder acionar aquilo dali para que tu possa acelerar e desacelerar a nave sem sem fazer com que ela perca muita o poder de manobrabilidade, né? Ao estacionar ele, ele vai puxar a velocidade de volta para dentro da faixa de segurança. Yep. Interessante, chance. Yes. Yeah, you just slide less when you're going slower. So, so we talked at the, start, at the start a few goals we want to do. So, a big one of this is how do we make this system uh, reactive and systemic? Uh, what does that mean? Um, so, we fully integrated IFCS and thrusters into all the other ship systems. They have 
item 2.0, like all the rest. Mas, um, gostei, cara. Eu, eu acho que eu gostei do sistema novo de, de voo. They all interconnect with all the other items in the ship. Previously, there were sort of two separate systems in the ship and never the two would meet. Um, that's not the case now. So, another thing we want to talk about is having a grounding for how these thrusters work in reality. Um, which we can go over. Yeah, so... Ah, agora o sistema de thruster, eles estão totalmente integrados com o sistema de energia da nave. Take forward into the future, and that was these things called Vasimir engines, which I can barely remember what they stand for. I think it's variable specific impulse magnetoplasma rocket. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, so this is a real life rocket technology um, that is sort of going through a lot of testing as a potential future. Ah, os thrusters das naves uh, são baseados em tecnologia real. Um, uh, yep. So the idea, basically is that you're going to ionize a fuel, um, like some gas, like argon or something. So you're going to use lots of power to create uh, this ionized plasma. And this is going to generate... Ah, a princípio, o cara vai ionizar o combustível com força, really criando calor, acelerando so o plasma para gerar impulso. ...basis to uh, make all the thrusters work off of this. So if we have a, a, a sort of defined thrust capacity for thrusters, and this is their performance effectively right this is the amount of newtons they can give out um, and then we draw power and generate heat and generate thrust based on this fiction we can kind of make this a really systemic um, believable system that sort of works under some future version of um, a real thrust system so we'll take a look at this oh no so we're gonna, uh, look at this in action um, we do a lot of this by looking at the MFDs um, just because it's a really clear way of showing it in a ah, sisteminha de energia tá bem legal. So as you can see now, every thruster has a little uh, item on the power UI. Ah, and they draw main power right dynamically up. as the thrust is given to them to move the ship. Uh, fuel is the same as this. this is, just imagine the power but replace fuel, it's the same. Que massa ali, um, cara. And as you're flying around, you ali, see your main thrusters going up using more power. Uh, the heat goes up as well with them. Um, now I'm stopping, so the retros went up there. Ah, um, tem os motores, os retro, it's, it's retro thrusters like também. Like the other systems we have in the game, you can move the power around. So let's have a look at that. Pá, agora tá muito mais interessante, cara. Gostei so muito do sistema de voo. You can manually underpower or overpower each thruster, and your ship's gonna behave accordingly. So here I've uh, reduced the power capacity on the rear thrusters. Um, and this also affects heat as well. So if you're underpowering thrusters, they're going to generate less heat. Afterburner uh, is actually just a facet of this system. It's just a shortcut straight into overpower mode. Um, and overclocking is then another level on top of this, uh, where you get that extra performance. Ah, cara, ali que massa, o cara desligou um dos thrusters pelo, pelo painel. They, they all just work together. Um, underpowered thrusters burn less fuel, overpowered ones generate more heat. Uh, if, if you're running low on fuel, you can throttle your, your thrusters down to just eke out that more, that more Tu pode regular uh, o quanto is, tu quer que cada thruster consuma para te poder ter uma economia de combustível um, e, e também game, evitar que faça muito calor a nave, né? Content, go, oh, I've run out of fuel. I'll just go to Crystal and get a bit more fuel. Yep. My, my ship's bah, hot. Tá legal pra caramba, hein? It's not really as interesting as it could be, I think. Yeah. So this gives us those consequences. So let's have a look. Vamos ver as consequências disso aí, ó. This is what I was saying earlier with the consequence to uh, taping down boosts. Um, o que, que so vai acontecer se tu der overheat nos thrusters? Will start overheating. Um, and the more and more you do that, the thrusters are going to wear out and they're going to get um, damaged. So immediately if you start overheating, we're not going to cut out your thruster. I think I think that's a bit mean, but we will immediately have the thruster start uh, struggling to give the thrust that it, it can. And you'll feel this. This is this is simulated dynamically on all the thrusters, right? So if you, for example, are overheating specifically your front left maneuver thruster, um, you're actually going to feel the ship is becoming imbalanced and you're going to yeah. have... Olha só que interessante, ó. Se tu começar a yeah, exactly. causar so muito yeah. dano por calor na sua nave, uh, e, por exemplo, assim, o, o retroprojetor do lado esquerdo é... der um overheat muito seguido, e vai começar a se desgastar, tu vai sentir que a tua nave vai começar a, desbalan a ficar right desbalanceada. Uh, you're flying around perfectly normally, and then you press shift to, uh, to afterburn, and you'll see you're getting overpowered here. Now, for the sake of showing this, 
we've massively increased the wear number. So the wear number is that middle number that's number 15 in the middle of the thrusters. Um, so you over ah, the thrusters too much, over the that number is going to start going up. Don't worry, it's, it's faster here than it will be in the game. Um, and you can see that the thrusters are starting to not use as much power as they were. I think that the ideal behavior here is that they actually draw as much power as they would have, but you just not ah, get the same amount of thrust out of the thruster. thruster ó, ele vai you continue usar uh, menos e menos after burning like this, your thrusters get weaker and weaker and weaker, and you'll immediately start feeling the ship get more and more sluggish, because you're just, you know, you're, you're, you're damaging the bah, thrusters by doing this. Ah, que interessante, hein? <risos> Vai dar muito louco atirando o mouse na parede, né? Achando que o negócio tá bugado. Se você continuar fazendo isso, as coisas vão acontecer. Que massa, o motor falhando ali, cara. O visual cue disso é os fatores de misfires. Agora, os misfires vão ser coisas que acontecem em todos os itens, quando eles estão warm e overheated. E os fatores de fatores de fatores, eles vão acidentalmente falhar, como um carro de fatores. Uh, sometimes they're not going to respond when you want them to respond. They're generally going to make flight pretty unstable. Um, we talked about changing thrusters out. Different thruster sets will have different grades. So if you, if you want to invest the time to, to get some resources to get better thrusters, they é aí que vão entrar as categorias de thrusters diferentes. Então, quanto melhor o thruster que tu comprar, melhor o, o motor de propulsão, melhor vai ser o desempenho dele. Mais tempo ele vai durar também. Mas, no caso, isso não é algo que vai acontecer segundo a segundo. Isso é que você warned os thrusters out. You've done lots of stuff for Sim, é justamente o que ele está explicando ali, Cristiano. Well. O, o yep. sistemas das naves uh, vão tendo sobrecarga. Então, por exemplo, se yep. tu Absolutely. sobreaquecer muito os teus thrusters, so eles vão começar a sofrer dano e a perder to, performance. Tu pode inclusive so, é, ficar com a nave desbalanceada, the tipo, o thruster de um to lado to funcionar uh, menos do uh, que o thruster do outro lado, entendeu? Afterburner and the strength thrust strength system are your friend in these scenarios. So going back to this, if you look at the right side of the HUD, um, we're after burning here. Uh, oh, that was an afterburn. Lots and lots of heat is being generated here. So to manage that, I just bring the thrust capacity down really low. Uh, generates a lot less heat. As I bring it up, the, the power and heat go up in turn. Um, Olha só, again, cara, afterburner is just a shortcut to overpowering. And this, this is where you're going to be. Aqui dali, se não me engano, o controle de thrusters ao lado. Quer dizer, tu pode diminuir o quanto a aceleração da tua nave, ela vai, vai, o quanto vai ser forçada a aceleração da tua nave. Então tu pode chegar à velocidade máxima dela é, usando menos potência dos thrusters. Então, por exemplo, se tu deixar os thrusters em 50% uh, e botar no shift, ele não vai gerar tanto calor, não vai gerar tanta sobrecarga no, nos thrusters do que tu deixasse ele em 100% e atolasse dentro do shift. Since we simulate this, uh, we can actually do, we can just push this to limit. We can say, hey, if someone shoots your thruster, we can start reducing its power output and its strength. Um, and this is kind of this level of dynamic uh, flight behavior we've just never had before. Bah, que legal, so we cara. take a look at this inside the Freelancer. You're flying around, your thrusters are in perfect health, you got no problem. And so here... Agora eles vão sumar os danos, ó. Gladius is going to shoot some thrusters. It's already shot the one on the right there. The more and more you do this, you can see the thrusters starting to get damaged. Okay, um, massa. And you will immediately feel this in the handling of the ship. So the idea here, uh, so you can see these two thrusters have been damaged. If you try and move, you're just not going to get the strength out of them that you need. And the expectation here ah, is that we want legal, more velho. interesting uh, combat. O cara so causou that, you know, dano no, nos thrusters de um, de um único lado um, e really a nave perdeu um, completamente o balanço. But actually, it could actually be another. Uh, Ela não consegue chegar a sua performance máxima. Or even if you can, if you're good enough to hit the maneuver thrusters, you can cripple a ship so it can't even roll. Yeah, it's at the moment it's very time to kill, and we've always talked about time to disable. You oh. want to be able to. É demais, hein? Uh, at the moment you can't really do that, but this is a system that allows you to cripple that ship. You've got distortion weapons to do that. You can physically damage them. So yep. it's all bah, building up legal. to that grabbing hold of other ships. You know, because the thrusters are, are drawing power so dynamically as well. If you, for example, take out the power plant of a ship, 
they're not going to be able to power any of their thrusters. The ship's going to be completely incapacitated. You just won't be able to move, um, which is pretty cool. So there's a bit more. Show me. I think this is a really important uh, thing that we've done. Is we've gone over every single ship in the game. Um, eles, and eles rebalancearam them, todas as naves do jogo com, com esse sistema um, aí. This kind of, I feel like this is kind of a subtle thing for a lot of people, but I think for the people who really know uh, the details of flying, this is a huge, huge deal. Bah, so what the goal is here, we're to try and get some more variety between the ships and try and feel more momentum in the ships and feel more character between them. Um, so we're going to go through and we're going to create like a, a systemic. Uh, system for deciding what thrusters and, and what size of thrusters are going to get certain uh, thrust capacities, and so that across all of the ships we sort of have this uh, this uh, unified uh, balance. Valeu, Arc Bulldog. Até mais, cara. Valeu por estar a live até agora. They get thrust assigned to each direction. Yeah, the, the momentum part is key here. Like at the moment in the game. Means, provavelmente pode um, ser alguma atualização deles lá. Absurd amounts of uh, power to them. Yep. And this changes that yeah. significantly. In in 33 there are actually ships that have like these tiny little maneuver thrusters and these giant main thrusters and the maneuver thruster has more thrust than the mains. Um, so no more of that. We're going to make this a lot better. Ah, ficou muito legal o sistema de thruster deles aí. So if we look at the Gladius, the Gladius has these two really big thrusters. Um, straight away, if I make a left turn, you can see how much more drift there is than there used to be. You really want to feel the momentum uh, when you're moving a ship around. Wow, look at the sound that it got, man. So I think uh, the, the Gladius has quite a few thrusters that can point downward. Um, so you will actually feel differences in trying to strafe in certain directions. And of course, the angular uh, acceleration is also super important here. Um, the layout of the, the, the Gladius's thrusters actually gives it more pitch authority than, than yaw. And so in this ship, that's going to be the dominant way. You're going to want to try and use your roll and pitch to get on target and hold the target in front of you. Um, and that may not be what we have with other ships, right? Um, variety and character. Yeah, this variety is super, super Muito important show. to us. I saw. So you can see in the outside view here, um, as you move around, it really, I, I can't stress how cool Cara, it feels to have this momentum. Tá muito it really né? makes flying, um, it makes it arguably more difficult, um, but I think a, it's more rewarding um when you fly difícil, really well. Muito that's, that's really cool. So I think we will, uh, we will move Let's on. Make a different ship. Yeah, we'll move on to the Hornish. So yeah, Hornet in comparison to the Gladius, much beefier, much heavier. Uh, and it has weaker directions in all other axes except for going forward. So it has that huge main engine. So far more acceleration going forwards. Um, ah, mas vocês terem uma ideia como a coisa Gladius. mudou? Em relação so has, a uh, Gladius e a Hornet, a Hornet ela é muito mais difícil de manobrar so em relação a, a Gladius, ships, mas ela, pra, ela como um nave para aceleração, ela é muito melhor que a Gladius, por causa de, do motorzão grande que ela tem, é, que, a, que a Hornet tem em relação a Gladius. Um, again, video, uh, participation at this point. How many of you have a Gladius? Stick your hands up. Que massa, Not that hein? many. Not that many. How many of you have a It's a lot more. Uh, then let's look at another ship. How many people have an Aurora? That's a lot more. So yeah, the Aurora. Mas como, como a, a Hornet so uh, balança, né? We've been kind of guilty of punishing the Aurora a bit too much, um, making it pretty much useless in combat. And you know, it's still a starter ship, so it's still not going to be anywhere near as good as the Gladius and the Hornet. But using this new system of assigning thruster strengths, we can actually have it give some strengths. Like, the, one of the big strengths of the ship is that it's really, really light. Um, it's much lighter than the, uh, the Hornish. Um, and so even though it has weaker thrusters overall, it actually has uh, almost, I think it actually has slightly more acceleration in, in some strafe directions than the Olha Hornish. Olha só que interessante, um, ó. But it obviously sacrifices... Ah. Um, 
A Aurorinha, apesar dela ser. De, dela ter. É, um motor de propulsão bem menos potente que o de uma Hornet, por exemplo, por ela ser mais leve, ela ganha em recuperação de vetor em relação à Hornet. Então, quando for fazer uma manobra e tu precisar retomar o vetor, a propulsão dela vai ser muito melhor para tipo, tu conseguir é, se realocar né, em relação à Hornet, porque a, a Aurorinha é muito mais leve. Fala, Metterdão, beleza, cara? Obviamente, né, que a Aurorinha nunca vai se equivaler a uma, a uma Hornet, nenhuma Magladys, mas com certeza ela, ela vai ter sim os seus pontos fortes em relação às outras naves. Valeu pelo follow, Metterdam. Seja bem-vindo, cara. Acho que o cara vai ter que aprender muita coisa para voltar pelo Tacom. And it was just kind of a pain. It took yeah. it took hours. Way way back years ago, we as designers to to tune the ship, you had to go in each individual thruster XML and go put its force output in newtons. Yep. To do all those, then you had to reload the game. Then you had to test it with no feedback on the the times and the accelerations rate, and go. Yeah, that feels okay, yep. or that feels terrible. You know, gimbal thrusters. Uh, Because we have gimbal thrusters, thrust can, thrusters can give strength in lots of different directions, but not at the same time, right? And é, que nem o Nimi falando ali, e vai ter que aprender de novo, porque essa não é a mecânica final. Concordo, cara, acho que vai ter, vão ter outros balanceamentos mais pra frente. We run back to the editor. So here's the editor. So we have this new tool here, uh, which is the IFCS editor tool. And this is going to allow us to do live editing. So we run in the game. Uh, I'm gonna spawn a Gladius here. Ai, que malandro! Every studio has their own favorite ship, so yeah. the US studios like like to test everything on the Hornet. The UK loves to do it in the Gladius. Okay, so we have these uh, dev tools now, yeah, which we've never had before. So as I move around, we can see the thrust output and the gimbal direction on all of the thrusters while you fly around. And this level of information we've just never really had before. Ah, que Now, these massa. big uh, red and blue cross in the middle of the screen here. This is the thrust strength for linear thrust for this ship. So you can see you got 65.8 meters a second forward. Ah, sim, por um lado é bom. Left, Sempre. Seven to the right as well. So we have all the thrusters in a list here, right? So these are these are the, the thrusters. We can click on them, and they'll highlight where on the ship that is. Acho que a, o, a, a, o reto propulsor vai ter em so todas the elas, cara. If I make these 10. You can immediately see that the ship's handling or the ship's forward acceleration has changed. If I try and accelerate forward, it's going to be a lot slower. And there's no reloading of the editor or anything. This is immediate. You immediately feel the difference. We have a lot of ships in the game, so if we have to reload the editor every time we want to do it, it adds minutes times hundreds of ships. It gets very long. So uh, to go the opposite, why don't we take some of these thrusters at the front here and we're just going to make them really strong. We're going to Like, a great career in 100 million that'll do so we now have 50 532,000 meters a second forward so it's you can feel the difference in the roll is just immediate difference we get up to speed really fast so we have this live editing now obviously we mentioned earlier that hand editing thrust capacities is just kind of a no no um, i mean you could do it but it's basically impossible to guess what these uh, thrust what these accelerations are going to be So to solve that, we have this calculator here. Uh, we can enter the ship's desired handling. So I'm actually going to put these back to a sensible number for a second. Is that right? There we go. So um, if I say we got 15 meters a second in the forward Y direction of the ship, if we just change this to 100, and this is different from where we are where it's all based off goal times. Um, yep. this is a Valkyrie já está disponível, cara, para venda. So enter in the desired acceleration. Já peguei uma para mim. Tune ship, and it'll automatically calculate the thrust capacities of all the thrusters, um, and it will obviously now you can see. Consegui derreter quase tudo que eu tinha, menos o pacote principal do game, obviamente, senão tu fica sem acesso ao launch. E consegui pegar ela. But you'd just be insane to do that. I don't know why you'd want to do that. 
Um, Fala, Joe, beleza, cara? Ah, meu, tu perdeu um gameplay fudido da 3.3, cara. Se eu não me engano, a Valkyrie está liberada agora para 3.3. Ah, tá, já sei porque que passa a zoeira no nosso celular. Deixa aqui que daí ela não faz muito barulho. Ah, vamos ver agora o voo atmosférico para ver como é que tá. Olha o áudio na atmosfera, que massa. Caraca, velho. Já começou o segundo estágio? Nossa. O segundo estágio é aquele que a gente vai, vai ter que dar uma olhada, né? Anybody notice anything different about what was shown there? Well, so now got left. <laughs> ah, mas depois so, a gente tem the war vial depois. We do simulate drag, but we never got round to implement. Vamos olhar so alarm makers e vamos ter que deixar isso aí para o, o segundo estágio para outro. It's hard to massive. State how much of an improvement that is and a big change. It's it's what makes atmospheric flight different to space flight. Um, rather than just being a, a diluted version of space flight. Um, so the atmospheric flight system as a whole has had a, a huge amount of work done to it. Um, lift, drag, turbulence, they've all had some changes. So let's have a look at it in the Gladius. Yeah, so we fly around in the Gladius and we try and yaw. Immediately you're going to feel um, torque on the ship trying to keep it into the wind, right? Obviously, if you hard yaw in a plane in, in real life, It's just not going to work, right? And then as you see, if we roll and pitch, um, you can actually turn so much faster. In fact, you can actually almost completely arrest the, 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 dr the drift that you would get in space. Ah, so you see how hard we can turn. We actually start to black out. That's not black out from the thrusters. That is black out from the aerodynamic forces on the ship, um, which is not something you get in space. I think this is a... This is a This change this has to, to fly it. You can Olha see só, cara, que, que interessante, ó. No... Um, na atmosfera, se tu simplesmente virar, um, a nave ela não vai te acompanhar. Mas tu fizer um movimento de rotação e tentar manobrar, ela vai manobrar com muito mais facilidade que como acontece na vida real. Cara, tá muito interessante. Bah, olha o atmosférico tá muito interessante, hein? So let's uh, let's compare this to another ship which is not not nearly so aerodynamic. Everyone's favorite, the Aurora. So the Aurora is a flying brick, really, isn't it? It's not really got much of a lift surface. Um, so it is a lot. It flies a lot slower because it. Olha só que interessante, os caras estão tentando virar, mas por causa da resistência do ar, ela não consegue. Ah, que legal, mas esse cara gira a nave e manobra e ela vai. Que legal ficou o flight model. I should add that you know your your thrusters are doing all this work when you have a super nice Oh, Daisy, Daisy. A Aurora é a melhor aerodinâmica de todas. Parece uma pedra caindo do céu, cara. Which obviously you can't do in the Aurora. You can't have to have thrusters working an awful lot more. Yeah, you're going to go down pretty quickly with this. Exactly. Exactly. So, let's have a look at what's going on into the hood. Yeah, so this is a little bit of debug stuff. You can see what's going on. So the red line is the drag, and it's obviously moving around because of some of the turbulence in the air. And you roll and pitch, and you get this sudden force of lift pulling the ship up. Um, and this, I just, I hope, unfortunately, we couldn't have aerodynamic flight at the, uh, the, the Drake Virtual Training Facility today. 
but this difference is massive, right? You Essa é a ferramenta de debugs deles, ó, mostrando a força do ar que faz em relação à nave dentro, tá te mostrando os planetas, ó. Ah, cara, tá interessante, hein? And the hope is that you're going to go into atmosphere and atmospheric flight is going to be a bit more like planes. Um, and that difference is going to be really, really drastic. Uh, BR Chagas perguntando: será que se eu fizer o upgrade para a Mustang, ela virá com esse novo design mostrado no vídeo? Sim, cara, a 3.3 traz ela. Se tu gostou do novo layout da, da Mustang, tu pode trocar com tranquilidade. Sim, eles atualizaram o layout de todas as Mustangs, todas as variantes dela. Freelancer, not a particularly aerodynamic ship. Uh, it's in atmosphere here, going forwards. Um, hopefully, we're going to look at the MFDs a little bit in a second to to see just how hot your thrusters are. So, if you look at the target velocity as well, you can see that the ship is not actually able to reach the target velocity, and that's because of the drag. Um, Olha só que interessante, ó. Então, o cara, cara vai ter que fazer umas manobras muito interessantes para chegar na velocidade máxima da nave na atmosfera. O interessante da da freelancer é que ela não tem aerodinâmica para chegar na velocidade máxima dentro da atmosfera. There has been so many other changes to the flight system um, in the past year. Bah, ficou brutal, hein? Fala, GBL, beleza, cara? Pode ficar tranquilo, depois eu posto os replays. Decouples much fun with all those bugs swapping between the two modes stuff not remembering itself we've worked on all of those yep um uh, going with that dual stick flight i think is something that hasn't really had the attention that it needs um so we put a lot of effort into, into that to make that experience uh, better nós trabalharam bastante para melhorar a experiência de voo com dual stick hein para quem tiver essa config aí yeah, you can try it some dual stick flying in the uh, in the LAN area um and Uh, AI flight now uses exactly the same system, so we get lots of cool little little stuff. Um, wingmen can, especially for squadron, we've got all the wingmen yeah, that wingmen can just can sit follow your ship right on your wing, uh, or just be slightly offset and they move with you. That's all. A lot of the, the core AI flight systems have been heavily updated, and this is going to slowly trickle down into the AI flight behaviors to make you know significantly improved uh, AI flight. We've also uh, worked a lot on the core like performance of the system. So hopefully having like 80 ships in a level is going to not completely tank your frame rate. Um, so we'll get some more frames per second out of that and the whole system is a little bit lighter on the CPU, uh, which is a huge improvement as well. More ship design tools. So at the moment the the sort of knowledge for tweaking and tuning ships is very centralized. If something goes wrong, there's only a few people that can deal with it. A galera fez melhorias aí no sistema do, de performance do game em relação a naves, ó. Parece que agora os FPS não vão ficar tão brutalmente mais baixos do que antes, o que já é uma coisa boa. So another thing that we can do now is swapping out your thrusters. Um, this is a super exciting thing. It goes back to what we were talking about earlier in how The thrusters all have their own individual thrust capacity which dynamically changes the ship's handling. So you can for example either swap out a whole set of thrusters or you can swap out specific thrusters and the handling of the ship will real time change uh, based on that. Bom, agora o cara pode ó, tirar um único thruster uh, e colocar ele no lugar, por exemplo, caso tu tenha um thruster com problema, 
Ao invés de tu trocar todo o setup, tu pode trocar só um. Shows you G-Force, that's back. Lots more planned. So this will be coming out in 3.4. We weren't ready for 3.3, unfortunately. But there is still a few months before this happens, and we actually have some more things that we want to do. So hover bikes, huge deal. I think right now they just don't really feel great. And so we want to go over the handling of hover bikes and really tune that experience and make that a lot more interesting. So it's you know more like your 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 close to the ground tight control hover bikes. Speed of feel that everyone always wants. Networking. So obviously the network team have been super busy with OCS, bind curling, serialized variables, everything. We need to get their support to finish off a few more things on the Ó, para eles conseguirem avançar um pouco mais, ó, com finalizar esse trabalho que eles estão fazendo com o sistema de de trusters e também da das hoverbikes. Precisa do 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 acesso finalizado. You're all in a server there 6 on 6. So really the thing that you all want us to work on, right, is ESP. Uh we have already done a lot of work on ESP, um, but there's a lot more time, and the hope is that over the next few months, now that you're all sort of got to play this, uh, we're going to spend a lot more time on ESP, and we're going to dial that experience in for, for 3.4, um, hopefully with your feedback as well. I think it's a, it's a feature that is very reliant on what the actual experience of, of a wide variety of players are. So we're going to spend a lot of time. O Leo comentando ali, quero ver eles otimizarem todo o game com tantas features que eles estão implementando. Cara, o OCS é, é o, a tecnologia mais importante que você tem que implementar até agora. Ela funcionando, tu pode ter certeza que muita coisa vai melhorar. Os sistemas de também estão para fazer muito trabalho. Queremos fazer que a não seja realmente bom, e queremos fazer isso muito melhor. And the systems to help us do like auto land and stuff. Ah, no, optimize it for complete. No, we won't. Até porque tem muita coisa ainda para fazer, entendeu? We need that for bigger ships like the whole sea who need to dock to stations to be spawned and load everything. Because obviously, if they're full of cargo, they can't land. You can't land. You can't sell your cargo. So it all ties together. So I think we're actually running over time. We're probably going to be asked to leave the stage at some point. So I think that about wraps it up for us. Ó, parece que finito o evento sobre Fight Mode. Gostei bastante do que tá por vir, hein? Thank you very much for watching. I hope you please go and play this in the Drake Virtual Training Facility and tell us what you think. It matters so much. Thank you.